today we're at Fort Frederica National Park. This is a lot of history uh, of how Frederica and South Georgia got its start. Uh, this is a part of the National Park Service, uh, just like the Great Smoky Mountains and other national parks across the United States. Uh, Fort Frederica is uh, also a national park. So we're going to go in there and take a look at some old uh, battlegrounds and uh, some of the first places that people settled here in South Georgia. You ready to go, Miss Leela? I'm ready. All right, let's hit it. Okay. All right, it's a visitor center. British flag. Believe it or not, the British are the ones that settled this first. And it was up to them to keep the Spanish from taking it in. And that's where we get Fort Frederica. Got different programs, demonstrations, and guides for different times of the year. That's 2024 schedule. And this actually shows where the forts in South Georgia along the coast are located. H1 National Park. Ah, Captain. Permission to enter. The, the museum here in a park film that plays every 30 minutes. Okay. Um, the next one will be at 4.30. Well, it's also the last one. All right. Um, yeah. Great. Thank you. To the fort, you head back out. Okay. Thank you very much. The ranger was telling us about a movie that's playing in the theater. things they found, artifacts, they're always continually doing uh, excavation and hunting these artifacts out on the grounds and when they find something they are wound up here in the museum and I'm sure they're making digs out there right now. Pretty neat. Mr. Abbott, newspaper publisher, 1870s, getting the word out. The Gula Geechee, West African tribe that were native to this area. This is some of the things that they made are really popular for these tight weaved baskets and other artifacts. This is James Oglethorpe, he said, was a general. He's the one that organized this fort and this community. And you can sort of see there what it looked like back in the day when he come up with that. He also organized Savannah laid that city out as well as Brunswick, Georgia. Had a lot in the south, southern Georgia. This guy looks like he's definitely up to no good. He been at 1738. A replica of a sign that would be in front of a business. 
as you would know them back then. Writing desk, no internet or keyboards or texting back then. You use this right here and a piece of paper out of that box and that is how you communicated with the outside world. There's your internet right there in the corner, Miss Leela. The feather in the inkwell and a box of paper. This is a replica of a home that you might find here. You might think that's pretty snazzy and something you'd see nowadays, but to think about all that being built by hand, uh, talk the bricks, the shingles, and everything made by hand on site, uh, quite an accomplishment. Taverns provided a place together. I guess you don't check your guns at the door back then. You never know when you're going to need them. This is sort of what it would look like. Had a lady behind there. Even got artifacts. Let's walk around this side. You can see those a little better. And they have found all this on site and preserved them from what you would see in homes, taverns, businesses, things like that. Now looking out this window, you'll see this is Fort Frederica, this is the grounds where all the businesses and houses and homes were located at that time. We've got a map right here. Of how that would have been laid out as it just in pure James Oglethorpe fashion. Everything is blocks. And uh, that's the way he laid out Savannah and Brunswick and some of the other towns, and that's the way he laid out uh, Fort Frederica as well, being the first civilization back in 1742. Just cross streets. Got some uh, pottery here, plates. Really ornate and typical fireplace they would use for cooking, heating. Clothing, buttons, belt buckles. There's some thimbles for sewing. Very interesting. Pipes, tobacco products, knives, handles, spoons, utensils, forks. than a British soldier. What do you think, Miss Leela? Yeah, I think so. Miss Leela's a schoolgirl there. <laughs> See this here, debatable land. The British and the Spanish were in competition for the lower parts of Georgia as they were, as the Spanish were advancing northward. Uh, they were already in uh, St. Augustine in places in Florida from the early 1600s. 
And uh, when General Oglethorpe and the, Brit the British started settling uh, this part of the area, there was a conflict in who had the rights to it. And as you can see on this map, from the Spanish claim and the British claim, uh, this is where the heavy lifting was going on in the fighting. So uh, that, that's pretty interesting reading right there. If you get a chance to look that up, uh, it's very much a part of our uh, history. If you get a chance to look up some of this history in this area, uh, you'll find out that this is very much a part of United States history, how our country come to be, uh, where the boundaries are, why they're there, who made the sacrifices to, uh, to give us this wonderful country that we live in. So I'd encourage you to, to take a trip down here or, or look it up online and uh, do some research. And you'll be surprised what you find out as far as how South Georgia and uh, General James Oglethorpe had a deciding factor in how this area was uh, was was settled. Got it. Merch. This lady was done been to the merch shop, I see. Patch and a pen. Patch and a pen. Can't go wrong with a patch and a pen. You got caps. Junior Ranger. It's like a cut in the Great Smokies. Ways that the kids can earn that. There's those hats, Miss Lily. You sure you don't want to get you one of those hats? No. <laughs> oh, I see. <laughs> Military town. All right. I'm going to take a walk out here and see what Fort Frederica looked like back in the day. Probably can't read that. That's got some information on it uh, about Fort Frederica. Uh, most of it we went over inside the museum. So uh, let's head on down here in this little and see what we can see. Miss Leela, this is a little different than the KOA there. Yeah, it is. That's where the soldiers and the garrison were stationed. And uh, when they come in here, that was their home. They built these ovens like this to cook in. Got by with that. So this was a replica of a garden. Garlic, chive, sage, lemon balm, mint. So let's go down here and see what we got. Looks like a blacksmith shop. some of the things they might have. And that's where they started making a lot of the door hardware, hinges, latches, things like that. 
preserving our past for our future. Let's go on down here and check out some more. I just love the effort the National Park System puts into maintaining the national parks all over the United States. Uh, this is certainly a, a good example of how they do it. And here's another good look at what a home would have been, the Abbott home. 18 and 68. The town wall. Now they did have a wall all the way around the outer perimeter. Just like it says, Fort Frederica, well, that's the way that it was built. And they had walls to fend off the attackers. Three layers, the last one being one solid to take the bullets, and the other two was sharp pickets. 1745. Now we're getting into the town part here, Miss Leela. Did you know this was a town at one time? Yeah. They've got, they found everything pretty much and they've got it staked off where the streets would be. We'll look at that a little closer as we walk down through here towards the fort. And uh, more historic artifacts that they found. And this street, we're getting ready to go down here. It says it was Broad Street. It looks like it was busy, hustle, bustle. And again, this is Broad Street running this way. And if you can see out through there, The long skinny posts are street names and markers where they would have went toward the water. And then the mark, the short markers are the actual street width that you would have to walk down, ride your horses, take in supplies, things like that. So we're going to walk down Broad Street here. The first business we would have is the flesh market. Now this is where you'd buy your beef slaughterhouse. They called it a flesh market, Miss Leela. No butcher shop. No, none of that. Flesh market. They want you to know what you're getting. Fresh meat. Fresh meat. Plenty of it. <laughs> so as the archaeologists have unearthed more and more, you can see actual foundations that's left. Had interpreters so they could communicate with the Gullah Geechee tribe, another, I think maybe there was another Indian tribe or so around, and uh, more artifacts. Matthew's house, it's a floor plan right there, if you can see it through the glare that uh, of what this house might have looked like in its day. Now the interesting thing is when they moved here, they found all these seashells, abundance of them, and they found they were good to build out of. And that's where this coastal tabby comes in that you see so many buildings built out of down here, even now. That tabby was very important in building, even back then, Miss Leela. Yes. It was pretty cool. Shoemaker and soldier, Lieutenant Maxwell, built his foundation of tabby 
which we just talked about. And it's interesting how they've come up with all these foundations, Miss Leela. Huts and houses. We've seen both so far. We saw the hut up there. And then this is a replica of the house. Foundation still there. Just as we mentioned. More pottery from this very site. Wine bottle and a table fork right from this side. Still proving that people truly did live here back in the day. Well, this is one of the more unique foundations that's been unearthed because it is underground. A new type of house. You can't tell, I'm sure, by looking, but the, uh, that much of the uh, first floor was underground. And they found out if they built them like this, that it didn't take as much material, they stayed cooler, and they could have a two-story house by building it down like this. Very interesting. 1749. This is a carpenter's house. Now, these people didn't just have a house and a business. Their house was their business. And this was Daniel Cannon. He was a carpenter. Helped people build these things and, and take care of the important part of, of getting the carpentry right so people could learn how to do it on their own. He made oars for the boats. 1740. Okay. Come over at age 15. There's some of the artifacts that they found here. Yeah, the carpenter of the neighborhood. This is Broad Street and Cross Street. Cross Street, running across, of course. That's an appropriate name for it. Right between the trees. And then Broad Street going forward. I want to take you guys over here and show you something I think you'll find interesting. I don't want to bore you with a lot of walking around, but, but there's a lot to see here and uh, it all ties together. No big epic things like you'd see in the Smokies, like seeing a bear or, or an elk or wildlife like that. But uh, the historic significance of things here is just uh, very noteworthy in my opinion. Things you rarely get to see even in a classroom anymore. This is what archeologists calls a dig and this is what they're doing. They're hunting for artifacts, things that were left here. All those things you see in the museum and the cases, this is how it starts. You can see right here, they've unearthed another foundation very carefully. Meticulously detailing everything. They've kept the tabby that they found and dug out of it. It takes a lot of time and a lot of knowledge to be able to do that. They take that stuff out a little bit at a time. And they put it in these screens and the refuse goes through, the artifacts don't. So you wonder, ever wonder what a archeological dig site looks like? This is what it looks like, Miss Leila. Is that what that is? That's exactly what that is. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. Walk over here and look at this. 
everything they find they know has come out of this home. Very interesting. What about that? All right, still coming across Cross Street. There's the markers. Well, Miss Layla, we made it to the river. Yes, That's beautiful. What, that just kind of gives you an idea of the size of this community was back then. You mm -hmm. know what? They couldn't have built this thing overnight. No. To think about James, uh, James Oglethorpe and the, the effort that he put in on organizing everybody to do this, it's pretty fascinating, isn't it? He must have had a big crew. Well, all the people that he brought in to settle this from Britain, yeah. uh, they had soldiers and, and uh, experienced people, craftsmen, and they, uh, they all had a part in this. So, yeah, he had a pretty good crew. Well, let's go over here to the magazine and see how they defended this beautiful country here. Frederica River running on this side of St. Simons Island and all these cannons posted strategically down through here. And if you was in a Spanish boat, you wouldn't want to come this way because it wouldn't be a good day for you. Once they loaded this baby up and sent it down range. Guns on the river, 1742. 12 pound ball, says it could shoot it one mile. One mile, wow. That's something, ain't it? This is what you see on all the advertising and, and, and things of that nature is, is the, uh, a lot of people calls this Fort Frederica, certainly part of Fort Frederica, but uh, uh, this is uh, where the soldiers and stuff kept their ammunition and things to protect it. This remnant is all the time has spared of the citadel of the town of Frederica, built by General Logan Thorpe in 1736 as an outpost against the Spanish in Florida. Hmm. King's Magazine. And we're not talking about National Enquirer. Very interesting. So we're heading back up Broad Street, Miss Layla. Okay. It's as broad as it is long, right? It's broad. Yes, sir, and it's long. <laughs> we're gonna head over here and look at a couple of military structures. 
interesting thing about the military, uh, they were encamped outside the town, uh, probably for security. Uh, of course, they interacted with the, with the people in the city, but they had their own, own things out here that they'd done. Keeper of the King's stores, the things they brought over. Somebody had to take care of them. And okay. Come to the next structure. It's the troops barracks. Interesting. So they were housed in this structure back here. And this area around the outside was a wall to protect them from attack and to have other things that it took to keep them going. Hospital. Seventeen forty seven keys, pot holders, all from this site. Military barracks. Well, Miss Leela, military barracks. Yeah. They're a long way from town, you know it? Yeah, they are. Good well, place to sleep. Yeah, they would. They could go about their military stuff, it's just like a base, being yeah. close to town. And this was no different. They had the, the walls around the town and I'm sure they had to patrol those and everything took part took place from here. So uh, interesting part that that would be here way out from the town. Another one of these small saplings here, Miss Layla. Yeah. I don't know if you could get any firewood out of that one or not. <laughs> I have to think so. It is. Absolutely mind blowing how big these trees can get. Hundreds of years old. It's all these these trees saw all the action that they had here during this time of conflict. They could talk. Wow. You might be wondering what happened to Fort Frederica? Well, after it was abandoned in 1758, a fire destroyed most of the structures. The few that remained were pillaged and burnt in the 1778 occupation of Brown's Rangers during their American Revolution. They made a plantation out of it from 1758 to 1860, and it had small farmsteads until the National Park Service took it over. So that's what happened to it. Well, Miss Leela, Fort Frederica National Park. Yes. What do you think? Oh, awesome. So, Just, such scenery. It's small, isn't it? No. <laughs> no, not, not quite. It's huge. It's the Great Smoky Mountains on flat lands, <laughs> I think. But uh, hey, man, there's some good history here, you know it? Yes. I mean, they have preserved these artifacts and uh, got it marked out and, and displayed well with signage where you can almost see where things were at and the people that lived here. But uh, man, another spot of rich history for our country yes. that probably gets left out of a lot of schools. But uh, man, if you get a chance to come, I highly recommend it. You won't be disappointed. And uh, there's a lot to see, a lot to learn, and uh, you can't ask for a more beautiful setting. You know it? That's true. Yeah. So hey, if you like this vlog, hit that big thumbs up button at the bottom and consider subscribing to Popular Adventures for more road trip adventures like this. And uh, until we see you again, bye-bye. Uh -uh.